This is ominous. Ominous? Ominous. Caves have a long history with video games. Think of all the caves you've been in in games. You, you pretty much lose track. I mean, there's games where all you're in is a cave. Like, you know, like Spelunky or Shadow Complex, for instance. And then, you know, there's a million caves in Skyrim or Uncharted or whatever. I think Mario goes in caves at one point. But has there ever really been a game just about a cave? The answer is no. Except for now it is yes, because there is a game called The Cave. When you start up The Cave, you're introduced to the titular cave by the cave itself. Cave. Yes, yes, I'm a talking cave. It's a, it's a talking hole in the ground, full of, uh, you know, mystery and intrigue and stuff. And the overall goal of the game is to explore the cave. If that seems dumb to you, I'm, I'm sorry. It's, it's not. It's actually great. So, so go away. The cave's writing is full of the same charming and hilarious humor we've come to expect from Ron Gilbert's previous games. Knight seems to be having some problems pulling that sword from the stone. Raise your hand if you're surprised. Yeah, me neither. You should have put some more points into charisma and chivalry. But a little bit darker. It's kind of like if Edward Gorey and Rube Goldberg collaborated on a surrealist version of Heart of Darkness. It's not the most in-depth of stories, and it's better to approach it as a series of vignettes than as one cohesive narrative. Visually, it's up to the standard of the rest of Double Fine's games, and the basic stuff like color theory and character walk cycles are done so well that they really make the game pop. There are seven characters to pick from in the cave. Some of them are types of people you'd expect to find in a cave, like an explorer, for instance, and some of them are slightly more out of place, uh, a nuclear scientist or a pair of creepy Victorian twins. When you start the game, you must pick three of these characters and progress into the cave. You know, to explore it. Inside the cave, there are two basic types of sections. Regular puzzle sections, which can be completed by any of your three little guys, regardless of who you picked, and character theme sections, which can only be unlocked by the star of that particular section. You know, for instance, the monk can only play the monk's part. Each character has a special ability. The knight's got invincibility, the time travel can phase through certain obstacles. These powers will occasionally come in handy when solving certain puzzles, but they're primarily for accessing their various theme levels. It feels a bit like a missed opportunity since the different powers don't vary enough to make replaying puzzles with different characters that much more interesting, but when it works, it's kind of cool. The platforming controls are not the tightest or the most responsive ever made, but there really aren't a whole lot of points in the game where they need to be. This isn't Spelunky. The cave is primarily an adventure game about solving puzzles. If you fall to your death, you're gonna get respawned immediately. Occasionally you'll pick up or interact with the wrong item, which could frustrate some people, but it never really bothered me a whole lot. Parts of the cave require a ton of cooperation between your characters. This is true whether you're playing alone or with real life friends. But other levels focus on one character, leaving the other two on the sidelines. For instance, the Twins level, a Victorian mansion, requires them to scamper around doing all kinds of stuff, but only requires a couple instances of involvement from whoever else you're controlling. Terribly sorry, loves. I can't let you go out and play with your friends until you've had your supper. Your mom's making your favorite. When playing couch co-op, players can switch between their heroes easily enough, but there are points in the cave when the multiplayer element really doesn't work and just feels kind of tacked on. Probably the biggest thing working against the cave is how repetitive it can be. Exploring the cave by yourself involves moving each character through an area individually. There's no command to make the two characters you aren't playing as immediately follow you, which means you're gonna be forced to climb certain ladders or run through certain areas like three times in a row, and that can get old. In theory, the cave selection of characters and variety of generic and theme levels allows for mix and match replayability and gradual exploration of the cave. In reality, well, there are seven characters, each with a theme level, so that means that no matter how you play it, you're gonna have to wind up repeating the levels of two characters when you're playing as that seventh guy to complete his unique section of the game. Factor in the generic levels that you're gonna have to repeat and the fact that when you're playing alone, you're forced to move each character through the same section individually, and parts of the cave will definitely wear thin. Repetition in games isn't necessarily a bad thing. In some games, that's the whole point of the game. I mean, people's played Spelunky for hours and hours repetitively, but that got different. In an adventure game, the whole thrill of the gameplay is solving a puzzle for the first time, at least for me. Solving a puzzle the second time when you already know how to solve it is just kind of a fetch quest, and solving it a third time, it gets really tedious. During that very first playthrough, the cave excels as an adventure game. The writing is absolutely delightful, the animation and art direction is gorgeous, and when they put more of an emphasis on cleverness than dragging blocks or standing on switches, the puzzles are extremely satisfying. Now you smell like a stinky old dinosaur. Isn't that great? Unfortunately, as a whole, the cave feels like an adventure game that's trying to be a co-op puzzle platformer, and in the process spreads itself way too thin. It's a 3 out of 5. 
If you're looking for a totally solid gameplay experience, I would just recommend kind of skipping the cave and going and getting some really classic point and click adventure that maybe you couldn't figure out back when you were a kid. But you know, if you're jonesing for some kind of Monkey Island humor and some great art direction and you want to support a game that's sort of trying to do something new, even if it isn't entirely successful, there are way worse ways to spend 15 bucks than by checking out the cave. Um, that's available now for like Wii U and Xbox 360 and PlayStation 3 and the Macintosh computer and the, the IBM PC. So, you know, go check it out on whatever. Um, all that being said, Double Fine, why you gotta make things so crazy? Can't you just do like a, like a simple, like old school, you know, point and click adventure game? I don't, I mean, there's gotta be some demand for that. You guys should do like a, you know, like a Kickstarter or something. Anyway, I'm Max Scoville. Stay tuned to Rev3 Games for all of our other reviews and video game coverage. I will see you guys around.